Hello everyone, in this video we're taking a look at KDE Neon, which is now based on Ubuntu 20.04, because this goes up in the long-term support releases, so it's been a couple of years since the last version. So yeah, now on Ubuntu 20.04, and we currently have the Plasma 5.19.4 desktop. Although it's fairly meaningless to say which version of desktop we have, but yeah, as of August 2020, with the rolling release desktop, it's at 5.19. And we'd just like to apologise for the background noise in this video. We're having some rather interesting weather in the UK at the moment mm. where it has been very, very hot and humid for a few days. And now, just this evening, we are getting quite a lot of thunder and lightning and some very heavy rain. So we've got a storm. <laughs> yeah. I've been switching between Kubuntu and KDE Neon for some time, so you've kind of used both of them, but may not have realized because both are using the KDE desktop, which is quite an aggressively developed desktop in Linux. But first off, starting with the basics, the memory usage at boot up was about 530 meg of RAM with nothing much open. Looking at it now, it's crept up with a couple of things open. And having the system information open here, we can see that we have KDE Plasma version 5.19.4 as well as the Qt Toolkit 5.14.2, as well as the Ubuntu kernel 5.4. KDE Neon is incredibly basic with a number of pre-installed applications. Uh, so if I just look for it quickly, we can see there is not much at all. We've got a browser, there's a VLC media player, no office suite, not much settings, nothing much on system, and yeah, that's it. So we're not here to talk about the applications that pre-installed, and the experience you're getting on the desktop is a stock KDE desktop, of which you have a couple of default themes pre-installed, although this being KDE, there's a whole loads of choice you can choose from. Again, this is all fairly standard. I'm not gonna talk about it in this review. Although there is a subtle difference between KDE Neon and Kubuntu, and that is the user feedback feature. I'm not sure I want to talk about this too much. Uh, I think I stirred up uh, quite a few strong feelings before, but yeah, this feature does not exist in Kubuntu. It's been removed and replaced with the Ubuntu equivalent. But anyway, the feature is disabled by default. I think a strong consideration of Linux is the privacy, really. I and mean, this is a good reason of using Linux and open source software over proprietary, in that you should retain control of your data although you're on proprietary systems. But well, we have made it um, a kind of a thing on our to-do list to try and get me a new system. Um, yeah, hence my little, um, my little play around with the Raspberry Pi 4 recently. In terms of available downloads for KDE Neon, you have a couple of choices. You've got the user edition, which is KDE software built on a stable base of Ubuntu. So this is rolling release. You get updates throughout the time that Neon is supported for. Then you have a testing edition, unstable and developer. So th those within their names are more for developers. As an everyday user, you just go straight for the user edition. It's simple as. But there's also a couple of other editions. You've got Korean, you've got a long-term support edition. So that is the Plasma desktop has a long-term support version as well as a more bleeding edge version. Although we thought it was interesting that it says Includes Plasma LTS release, but otherwise same rolling updates. Good for testing, not recommended for a stable system. It's unusual to see LTS not recommended if you want stable systems. Yeah. And you've got the Pinebook Remix Edition as well, because that's something that's uh, in focus as well at the moment with KDE. And yeah, Docker images, Snap packages, yeah. And that's the point about snap packages, because if you're concerned about going rolling release, then yeah, you might want to go for more stable software. But if you want newer packages, then snaps do provide you that option. Uh, I know there's some strong feelings either way on those as well, but they do provide an alternative over dev packages, which are generally fixed for the time of uh, release for Ubuntu in particular or Debian. So, Although there's security updates provided for some specific applications like browser, and yeah, this is the whole point about Neon, really. You're not just getting a bleeding edge desktop, you are getting bleeding edge applications. Although we were talking about this and there's the choice of applications is more related specifically to a desktop. They're more basic applications. Although there's a few, let's say more complex, larger applications here, 
if I scroll down to Krita, alternative to GIMP and Inkscape, or you could even say alternative to Photoshop. Some of these are quite interesting, actually, like K-Ruler, Screen Ruler, so you can measure things. Hmm. K-Cross-Stitch, Cross-Stitch Editor. <laughs> that is very niche. <laughs> yeah, they seem to have this um, rather niche selection where they've just clearly found areas where they're not going to make, um, where they're not going to kind of tread on any toes with regards to applications and things and just and just gone in that direction yeah. which uh yeah it's quite cool yeah because what you won't find here is the likes of say an office application but we've got LibreOffice. Which... yeah and that's already done very well so why would you want to reinvent yeah. the wheel <laughs> yeah in terms of office applications you've got a mail client and there's um there's the dress book you know, there's, there's the basic asides for it which is good you can have them uh, themed within KDE, so theming is very nice here, so why not? Well, there's a video editor, that, and that's more of a complex one, but there's not a huge amount of choice, really, of video editors in the open source world, and, and I know there's better ones. Eliza Music Player I've been using for a while now, I do like that one. Uh, and not to mention a multitude of add-ons and extensions you can get for the desktop. What I did find interesting is you have both Flatpak and Snap, pre-installed on the system so you can get the the more bleeding edge packages of course since there's a lot of contention about snaps then yes Flatpak is an alternative but if you look in the GUI software manager discover searching for some of the applications though only brings up the deb and snap package results so that one is uh, deb yeah focal uh, deb is favored over and above the snap which is completely different to ubuntu and this one is a Snap application. I've not tried too many applications, but I didn't see any Flatpak apps in the list. I really wouldn't consider KD Neon very good for a new user to Linux. It's far too basic. You wouldn't really know what you're doing. I mean, let's just take, for example, how do we install drivers? Um, there, there's, there's nothing pre-installed. I suppose you could select them out of Moon or Discover, but there's a way of doing it through the command line. Ubuntu drivers, devices. See, would you think of that? Even I wouldn't. No. I, I didn't even think of doing that. It wasn't until someone mentioned it in the comments that, yeah, realised there's a much easier way of doing it. But <laughs> even with VirtualBox drivers, there's uh, not an easy answer there. But uh, this does work for the NVIDIA drivers as well. This is exactly how I have installed the NVIDIA drivers on a full system install. So, yeah, in that respect, it's not for new users. There's no fancy introductions. There's no welcome screen. It really is the basic core of applications. So you have to have some idea of what you want. Although there is quite a large range of choice for the applications. And for what it's worth mentioning, I never really had a problem with the rolling release, all the continuous updates. Once in the few years I was using it, did it go slightly wrong, but it continued to function. I just was missing some slightly new feature. So, yeah, I wouldn't just be afraid of it just because it's rolling release. It sounds scary, but we have the likes of Arch Linux, it's completely rolling release. You've got a slightly softer version here. You've got a stable operating system with just the rolling release applications and, and desktop. Well, thanks for watching. And we'll see you all later. <laughs>